Hi there and welcome to this lecture where you're going to learn how to do visual mission planning with Google Earth. That's right, you're going to be able to go into Google Earth into a three-dimensional environment and set up and frame all your shots exactly how you would like them and then you'll be able to give it to Lychee to run as a mission. So this takes your drone footage, whether it's photography or cinematography, to an entirely new level because you can set everything up in a 3D environment. So, first thing, get yourself a copy of Google Earth, open it up. On the top left you have your search tool, this will help you get to your location. Underneath that places, I'm going to show you how to set up a folder and save your missions. And then beneath that you have layers, you need 3D buildings and terrain, those are very important. Those should be selected. Navigation in Google Earth is really easy, just click and drag with your mouse to move around. You can use your mouse scroll wheel to zoom in or zoom out. If you zoom in a little bit too low, just be careful because it will put you into ground level view. And you can exit ground level view by clicking the button on the top right and then just scrolling out. Here is a useful tip on how to prevent yourself going into ground level view. Just go to Tools, Options and then on the navigation page by default you'll be set to automatically tilt and into ground level view. So just tick the option above it, which is automatically tilt while zooming. And if you click OK and you zoom in, you will see that you can't go into ground level view anymore. Something else you need to be aware of, when you use your mouse scroll wheel, and for example you scroll backwards, you move very big distances quickly. So if you want to have more precise control, just use the zoom bar on the right, and you will get much more precise, smaller movements and that will really help you get your framing right. Looking at the top right navigation, you can make your camera look up or down, left or right. Beneath that you can adjust your camera position in the air. And then finally underneath that you have your zoom bar allowing you to get precise zooming in and zooming out movements. Alternatively, if you hold down your control key, left click and drag your mouse around, you can move your camera. And if you left click, let's just say we want to move around this building and frame our shot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the shift key, left click on the building, you'll see it creates a little circle, and now I drag my mouse and I can set up a precise framing for the very first shot that I'd like to take. So before we jump into that, a very important step is we have to now address the issue of the different DJI drones have different fields of view. So to solve this problem with the different DJI cameras fields of view, just go into the flyleachy.com website page. You're probably on that page right now if you're watching the video here. Scroll down to the bottom and you'll see a link, Download DJI Cameras Fields of View. Click on that link, download the file, and once you've got the file, double click and it'll open up in Google Earth. And just make sure you've got a copy of Google Earth Pro, which is now free. Okay, once it opens up in Google Earth Pro, you'll see it puts it into your temporary places. So this is called DJI Cameras Field of View, and you'll see you've got all your different cameras. Phantom 3, 4, Inspire, and if you have any of those cameras, you would select that. So what you would do is you would look for the particular drone that you're going to be using, or if, like, for example, it's an Inspire 2 and using the Olympus 25, you'd, you'd select that. Before we go into that, the first thing you want to do is you want to right-click on this, and you just want to save to my places and this means it'll take it out of temporary places and it'll always be saved to my places now what you're going to notice is that it opens up your camera in paris so a location had to be chosen in order to get the camera to point at something but of course you're going to be doing your mission somewhere else so let's just say for example we click on the phantom 3 you will see it the, the camera is much higher up and further away phantom 4 advanced it zooms in a little Mavic Pro, that's the Google Earth standard view, Inspire, and anyway, we're scrolling through the various lenses, you'll see eventually the 45 zooms right in. So in order for us to be able to go from Paris to, for example, Miami and not have it take long, what I want you to do is just go to Tools, Options, Navigation, and set your flight to speed to fast. And this means that when we're ready to go in and create the mission, we will be able to fly to the next location. So let's just say, for example, we're going to be choosing the Mavic Pro, and we have now got the correct field of view in order to now take the next step. And then the next step would be to type in the place where we want to go to, which was Miami. 
And as you can see, it jumped to Miami in a split second. So if we go back to Mavic Pro in Paris, and then we click on Miami, we are back here in a split second. Before I continue, I just want to point out on the top left here, don't be confused if you see FOVs. This is the previous name that we used for the DJI cameras field of view. We are in Miami. Let's minimize the FOV folder. Let's go to the My Places folder and set up a subfolder folder called Missions. Great. Now that we've got the Missions folder, let's set up a subfolder inside that and give it a name. Okay, so now we have the Miami mission and later on if you want to create a different mission, just go back to Missions, right click and add a folder. Brilliant. So we're in the Miami mission and the first thing we have to do, and if you understand Leachy, it needs to know where you're going to be taking off from so it's got a reference ground altitude. So what we're going to do is we're going to fly into position over our imaginary takeoff point and that will be somewhere down here. Okay, so let's just say for argument's sake we're going to be taking off somewhere over here. So I'm going to bring this into the middle of the screen and I'm going to go up here to the yellow place mark icon, left click on it and give it a title. We will call it takeoff slash one because that will be waypoint one and we'll click OK. And this is really going to be a reference for the altitude and it'll be waypoint one. Next is move your camera and frame it. And this is the beauty of Google Earth. You can now choose the perfect shot each time. So I'm going to move my camera into position. I'm going to say, OK, well, we will go to waypoint two over here. So I'm going to click the place mark icon and change that to two for waypoint two. OK, I just want to give you a tip when framing your shot. Now, Leachy relies on your GPS coordinates. And as we know, GPS is not 100% accurate unless you use RTK GPS. And that's only available on the Matrice at the moment, and it's very expensive. So the current GPS that we have might cause your drone to be out by one or two meters when it's up in the air. And this can affect your framing very slightly. So let's just say, for example, that this building over here is what you definitely wanted in your frame. Then I would strongly advise not having the building up against the edge of the frame, either to the left or to the right, or even on the bottom section there. Avoid framing your subject in the corner of Google Earth. Give it a little bit of breathing room, and this should sort out any framing issues you have if the GPS coordinates are out slightly due to the kind of GPS accuracy issues we might experience. I'm now going to set up the next shot, so I'm going to fly through these buildings, and I understand that this is probably not legal, but I'm just doing this as a demonstration. In some cases you would get permission to do this, in which case it would be legal. So I'm going to fly through these buildings, and this is also to demonstrate the safety feature. And I'm going to fly through these buildings and just look up at that building for the next shot, and that will be waypoint number three. And then for the final shot, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look over there, and zoom out a little bit using the scroll wheel and just position myself to give me a nice view of this area of Miami over there and we will call that waypoint four. So you can set up as many as you want and there you have it. Now a useful way to change altitude, let's just say for example we were going to do something really simple like we wanted to go in front of this building here and do a simple rise shot. We would drop a waypoint I would then hold the shift key and I would push my mouse upwards to climb in altitude and then I would hold the control key and look up and that way you can go up or down in altitude but you'll figure all of this out when you play around with the various Google Earth navigation features. Okay excellent let's have a look at our mission so if I double click here it'll show me takeoff position then waypoint two which is really the start of the mission waypoint three where I fly through those buildings to this building here and finally, waypoint four, where I zoom out and have a nice view. Okay, we're now ready to save our mission. We go to the Miami folder, right click, say save places as. We then drop it into a folder on our computer. And we make sure that we choose the KML option. Don't choose KMZ, only KML. And click save. Okay, we near the final step. So you want to bring this mission into Lychee. Go to flylychee.com forward slash hub on your computer. Scroll over missions on the bottom left, select import, choose your file, which will be the KML file. And then you've got two options. You can treat the views as waypoints, or you can add a photo action. So if we go to the first option, 
and we import it, you'll see it's brought the mission in and you'll notice there's a curve. So this will be a mission where it will fly smoothly and cinematically from waypoint 1 to waypoint 4 with a curve. Okay, so that's if you're making video. However, what happens if you want to use this method to actually just take photographs and use actions? Well, this is what you have to do. If you go back to the import screen, choose your file again and tick both options. It will then bring in a mission where curves are removed and you will auto notice that it's got a take photo action. So you've got both options and you can create two missions and save them. Okay. Now there's an extra really awesome feature and this adds a huge amount of safety and planning to your mission. How do you know that your mission is safe to fly? Well, what you do is you go down here and you say export as KML 3D path. Once you export and save that file, simply open it and it'll bring it up in Google Earth. When you open this file, it'll bring up your mission in Google Earth and it'll show you the exact flight path and you'll be able to zoom in and estimate whether you have clearance of any obstacles. So if you look here, just zooming in, we fly above these buildings and comfortably through them. You can even look downwards to estimate how close you are to a building. So in this case, you can see the flight path is quite close to this building and it might be a good idea to move and change the mission slightly. So with this tool, you are able to really get absolute safety and planning in place. And this really should be taking your drone footage and videography to the next level. You, for example, will be able to get a real estate project where they want a whole bunch of photographs around a building. You can go into Google Earth, position the camera, the correct camera for the drone that you're using, set up all the photographs, go to the mission, do the safety check first, then go to the flying field and execute it. You will use a fraction of the battery. You will get all the shots that you want and you will have a happy client. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy this awesome feature. And as always, fly safe.